Welcome to this video, the second in our series about pushing data from your Bubble app over to a Google spreadsheet. In the last video, what you saw was basically the setup from getting data from here and pushing it over into your Bubble app. In this video, we're gonna take a look at going the other way. Uh, a lot of the setup that you'll need to do first and foremost prior to uh, getting going is stuff that's already in other videos. It's not going to be covered here. Um, so if you happen upon this video uh, through just a search or some other means um, and we're looking for a way to send data from your bubble app over to a Google Sheet, um, you'll want to check out those other videos. They're linked in the description below. Uh, what are those videos going to show you? They're going to show you how to get your API credentials all set up uh, so that you can uh, access Google's API for the spreadsheets, uh, authenticate, and then be able to um, you know, set up an API call. So assuming that's, that's already done, uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at, so basically from the previous video in this series, we built an interface where we went out and we got the sheet data. Now what we're gonna do is we just have this interface and we're gonna show two different ways. Way number one is I'm gonna actually enter the data manually and it's gonna pull, be pulled from these four values here and then we're gonna push it over here. Uh, however, I can see how that is, you know, that's fine for an example like this. You'll be able to see how all of the piping goes in the back end for what data is going where. Um, but most likely, in a lot of cases, you're going to be doing maybe a search for something in your database. And like so, for example, you could do you could be searching for all of these uh, food fight supply items right in your database, and you want to grab all the costs with those, and then you want to update all those costs because you know maybe you have multiple systems uh, being joined together and you know, for part of that data set, uh, some of it just sits in a Google Sheet and you wanna be able to push it there. Uh, or you just have other reasons that, um, you know, you want to push data into, into Google Sheets. So we're gonna see those two ways. Again, one is straight up from uh, just this, these inputs, and then another will be more by, more dynamic because this is kind of limit, limiting, but it'll get us off the ground. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the uh, bubble API connector plugin. And um, again, there's a number of these things that you'll want to actually have already set up, basically getting uh, access tokens, refresh tokens, all these other things that are explained in other videos that this video is also a part of a uh, playlist for. So take a look on the channel for that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add another call and this is going to be a put call and what we're gonna do is take this URL, which will also be included in the description, um, enter that in, and we're gonna use this as an action. Uh, right away, we can see that we have the spreadsheet ID and range. Um, the range, there is a discussion in the video, in the first video for this, for when the data is going from Google Sheets to Bubble. Um, so take a look at the range discussion for that. There's also a lot of information online as it relates to, um, as it relates to get, getting the ranges right. Uh, also, I'll, I'll just show this. This, uh, this comes from here for the sheet. Um, if someone is looking at this for the first time for the video or you just needed a refresher, this is where this value comes from there in the URL. So that is the spreadsheet ID. And then the range, in our case, um, I've already got it written down and this is uh, allowing it because we've left off the <clears throat> because we have left off the uh, five here in this case, what it means is that it actually allows this to be edited, uh, you know, ad nauseum. I, I think that's the right word, meaning, you know, towards infinity, repeating down and down and down. Cool. Okay, so once you have those set up, be sure to add an authorization header. And this is just simply the word authorization. And the value is bearer, and then uh, here in this video, we're just showing the testing. There are other videos that show two things. One is how to get it from the, how to get an uh, access token from a code, which is through this authorized with Google, where you're sent to look at things uh, through your Google account or, you know, look through which Google account you want to sign up with and authorize. So here, what we have now is uh, once you have uh, 
basically created one of those tokens. Again, see another video. This this video is really, we're just getting through this preliminary stuff so you can see the setup, um, but uh, I'm assuming that you've already done some of these other videos prior to this. Okay, so next up, this is the, um, this is the JSON that you'll deliver to the API endpoint. And what you wanna do is put that in here and then now let's break this down. So depending on your particular range, there's a number of things that you might wanna look at in terms of how you're editing sh these sheets. So in this case, you might be editing a number of different rows. You can do, as I mentioned in other videos, a, a, a or sorry, I said row column, a column for each API call and then in your workflow you could just go boom 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 and update things your options are you know only limited to your creativity but however here's kind of the fundamentals to work with so that you you know have some actual clay for your creativity to to work with um, one is the range and then two is the major dimension for columns or this could also be rows uh, what's the difference well let's take a look at this example here and so if in this case, the values here, I'm actually, this is going to be, because this is a column, this is gonna be one, two, three, four, down this dimension. So we're just editing this. And because we have defined uh, this range here for B2 through B whatever, which is this range here, then we've you know played air traffic controller well enough so that it understands, okay, yep, this is what we're editing. Um, how how can you use this knowledge to get the results that you want? So, for example, uh, if you were the the structure of the the structure of the JSON here is basically you'll have an array with arrays in it, and these values here. So we can see that this has one uh, array, comma, two array. So those are basically the two options, but then if you set this major dimension, again, that's this thing for two columns, then this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna edit this and this. Uh, for one, two, three, four goes in column one, and five, six, seven, eight goes in column two. So you can pack all of that data in into this if you so desire. You can also do it as different API calls uh, like I previously mentioned. Now, if you say, if you were to set this to rows uh, from instead of columns here and put that as rows, what you would do then, or what you would just know is that it's going to take one, two, three, four and, you know, put it across the row uh, versus, and then, you know, across this row, five, six, seven, eight versus down the column. That's basically what's happening here. And then, so if you paired that knowledge with the range that you're working with, you should be able to uh, basically come up with the example, or sorry, you should be able to come up with the solution based upon this example. Um, let me try and help you one more with one more example. So imagine that um, I had, oh, let's see. Um, maybe price and quantity or something like that for these. So if this was cost and then, or cost is price, and then this was quantity. Um, I could also set this up so that the range here would be from B2 down to C5. So B2 to C5. And so let's see, so if I if I put C5 in here and then make sure up here in this area, we also say C5 in these two. And then so because I'm doing this as columns, you can see that if this was one, two, three, four, then this would come down one, two, three, four. And basically what I would expect to have happen over here is one, two, three, four down this first column, which, uh, corresponds directly to these one, two, three, four. And then the next column of C uh, two, three, four, five would be this one. So let's go ahead and noting that I've updated it here and I've updated it here. We'll just see that be reinitialized. And then we'll also see that update over in the sheet here. So all those got one, two, three, four. And, uh, but so what we're gonna do then now is actually we're gonna say that this is our array and now that's amazing because basically 
now you could have an array of, as long as you have these two brackets on the side, then you can put a blue dynamic expression here and you could go get, you know, a hundred of these items from your database or however many you would need. And then, you know, maybe play around with uh, quantities for timing and running back end workflows and these types of things in order to, you know, offload any, any waiting around, um, you know, for, for however your all the customization that would need to happen for how your world is set up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reinitialize like this because then we have this uh, dynamic array that we can input uh, information into. Pardon me. And we'll now we're going to see this happen uh, live with our setup here. So um, let's go ahead and refresh here. I'm going to hit say get sheet data, and we should see this update to one, two, three, four. Uh, so we see it pulling the data in now from the previous videos uh, workflows, but then now for this this workflow We have this uh, button. So let's take a look at what we have here. Let's go ahead and just this was just extra uh, UI work that's not gonna be shown on video, but we have basically input banana grapes hamburger and spaghetti here and these uh, four inputs when we submit and send, let's get them sent over to uh, the sheet. So what we're going to do is actually go and check what did we name this one? Send data to Google Sheet. Uh, when we do that, and actually we're just going to change this back to B. Reinitialize. And what would it have done if we were only having one of these arrays and we had a, a larger range? Uh, you know, on those ones, just test it, see what see what happens. Uh, that's some of the times the best way to do things in Bubble. Okay, so Google API send data, and let's take a look at why that is not. Ah, yes. Okay. So make sure private is unchecked. So always love that uh, option to have a little bit of an error. Uh, just to show off what can happen. Okay, so we can see here that this is going to be okay. And just fast forwarding through that part, we can see that basically each of these inputs is now put as a dynamic value here so that when we hit the button and send this off, let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, so this get sheet data corresponds to this stuff down here that shows up as a display. But now let's go to four, six, eight for this. Um, let's see, we didn't have it clear any inputs out, so it's not gonna look the most nicest or whatever, but that's okay. And then we can see here two, four, six, eight. Cool. All right, so now let's just go ahead and do one final thing where let's take a look at how this would work with the same workflow, but instead of all of this, We just want this inserted dynamic expression here. And then let's go and do a search for all of the food flight supplies and each item's price. And then we're gonna say, this is an important point. If you're making a JSON payload to send off to a, an API, do join with, and then we're gonna say this. Okay, and now this, this uh, one thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna make sure that the item name is set so that it's descending or whatever matches with this. And this is an important point that I didn't point out when we did it one by one through these things is that the, the order in which these exist in the array and the order at which these exist as they you know, are filtered or sorted here in your Excel sheet uh, are directly matching one-to-one. -one, and the only way to get them to all uh, sync up exactly one-to-one -one is just to make sure that the order on both of them is exactly the same. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just, just get the uh, debug mode turned on here. So we can watch this. So it's gonna send this over. And it's sent over one, two, three, four. 
And then let's actually go and look at our database as well. Okay, so we had one, two, three, four. But now let's pretend, let's live in a world where this is three. So you can see here, bubble resets the ordering here, and that's, uh, that's just a little deal here. Um, but anyways, that's basically it. That's basically all the things I wanted to show off in this video. So we can see uh, two ways of doing it. The way where it's manually inputted from a uh, field and your job in your world is to basically take the data from whatever setup you have in bubble whether that's from inputs or that's from you know some other api that's coming in being piped into the database and then from the database it's going out and you're just doing you know a dynamic expression here to get the data in the right format always use the join with comma because that you know brings them together so that it's an array and that's basically it if you like this video give it a like subscribe to the channel for more tips and thanks for watching